Morning, welcome to uh, this walkthrough on Motorway, the piece Motorway for Studio One. So this is the Motorway instructions for Studio One. Uh, we're going to start a new Studio One project. We're going to set the tempo to 110. We're going to save it properly. Uh, we have to make the best sound choices, we have to make the best octave choices. Most of the, well, all the instrumental parts are on white keys only. Um, note resolutions are only in eighth notes. Uh, everything should be programmed on the score first, then compose two more instrumental lines in keeping with the style and arrange this piece over 32 bars. Okay, that's all fine. There will also be some audio samples later for spicing this up. Okay, um, so let's start a new song. Um, I'm going to call it Surname, First Name, Motorway. Okay, uh, 44's right, 16's right. Uh, time-based bars, yep, uh, f five minutes, uh, one minute, um, and 110 is what it wants to be there. Okay, so that's fine. So let's do that. There we go. Um, next place we need to go is what's first on the score. This is a muted guitar. It's a one-bar loop that carries on throughout the piece. Okay, so um, let's go over. You've probably got your browser open. The browser comes open and you go to instruments. Again, this stuff's unpacked for me, which perhaps it shouldn't be. So let's um, just unpack artist instruments and come down to guitars and let's have a look. Let's bring across something that sounds pretty good. Strato guitar is probably about right. So let's try that one across there. So let's have a quick listen in to the piece that we want to listen to. There's the loop, so it's that it's that dunk 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 guitar that's in there. Um, that'll do it for the minute. We can change that sound a little bit later, but uh, um, let's just close that. So we want a one-bar loop. Let's do that, and so uh, double-click here. I've just drawn across the top to provide us with one bar. Um, double-click here, and you get your uh, clip going to double click on the clip and you get that. I'm going to get rid of the Well, we can keep that up there for the minute because I've only got one bar to deal with. Okay, so there's our sounds. Bear in mind they don't happen above C4. There's no sounds up here because the synth doesn't make any sound there. So down here it's got lots of sound. I think it's that one that we want. It's the A there beneath C3 on the particular one. Um, another little thing is everything's in eighths, so I'm going to change this quantize feature here to eighths. Um, just makes things a bit easier to see. I'm also going to press the control key and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit there. Uh, I can also do that here. Okay. So I press this these two little uh, horizontal bars. That's the uh, I'm gonna see what that called data zoom it calls that. So it's gonna zoom in on the data. I'm just gonna do that and then there you go let's Right, okay, let's get the pencil tool and draw those in. So there we go. Little thing that I actually want these to um, gonna select all of those and I actually want um, I think I want the first one in the bar to have a slightly higher velocity than the others. This is your velocity here. That's basically us done. So then you should have your... Um, that should just have that slight emphasis, that slight accent. That's great. Okay, that's working fine. How nice and annoying that is. Let's have another listen. We can mix these with different sounds a bit later. Um, so you can change these sounds as much as you like, as long as it gets sort of closer to the vibe of the original, the sort of 80s, um, the 80s sort of uh, sci-fi vibe. Um, that would be great. Uh, you're thinking um, things like the band uh, Kraftwerk, 
or uh, um, sort of science shows. Um, right, so let's have a quick look in here. Next one we're going to do is tambourine. It's a one bar loop on a drum or percussion patch. You find this tambourine sound uh, on any note of, um, you may find it on any note of a percussion patch. Piano roll just gives you the reference. It was played on the on the percussion patch in Pro Tools, I believe. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at this one. So we want um, to get ourselves drum kit, and let's um, let's just get normal classic kit. Let's just bring that across. Um, there are lots of tambourines in things. Let's just have a quick look with this one. Actually, if we just switch to the standard kit, just up here in the presets, go to the standard kit, that's got the far more nice sounding tambourine. And it's on an F sharp as well. There you go. So we're going to use that tambourine. It's on the one just above C2. So um, let's double click again here. It's a one bar loop. And we're going to come down here and it's uh, there. So the score says that it wants tambourine on the two and the four beat. Um, so that's one whole bar. So it's here. There's the two beat. There's the four beat. So now we should have. We'll put some reverb on that in a minute. You can, if you want, you can use the reverb. Notice that I pressed that little um, icon there to go and have a look at the synth. This is the tambourine synth, um, and you can put the um, you can put the reverb on it here. That's quite nice. Slightly over the top, but once you get some other instruments in there, that's gonna, that reverb's going to disappear again. So that's quite nice. Um, again, likewise, you can use that to... This is the Strat, so we could put a little bit of reverb on the Strat. Um, on the Strat, I also might use the FXB here. I might use the EQ. Just to take a little bit of the mids out, make it a little bit more ticky. There you go. So it's very powerful. Right, so there's the second line that we've got. Let's go and have a look at the third line. Third line's the drums, typically 80s sounding big studio drums, one bar loop, kick, snare, kick, snare on the on the on all the beats. Okay. So um let's uh go down here and I quite like large kit. Um or oh, stadium kit's really good as well actually. Let's go for stadium kit for the minute. There's stadium kit. Da 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 so stadium kit. Yeah, that's gonna work really, really well, especially once we get a little bit of reverb on it. Um that's quite nice. It's a bit bit dense. Okay, fine. Um let's double click in here and let's just make sure that we've got the right one. I'm gonna double click in there. Come down here. It's down the bottom. Kick is always C1. Snare is uh, the D above that. Uh, I might actually go for the E. It's a nicer sound. So then we've got this. That's the third line done. Okay, let's do the fourth line. Organ. This is a four bar loop. Okay, so now we're in four bars. We're going to have to do this. We're going to draw a little box around all three of these. And I'm just going to use the D key to, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to use the D key to give ourselves four bars. And then I'm going to pull this looping across and make sure it's there at five. There you go. Just so that it, so we've got enough space to do our organ. There you go. Lovely. Going to go to keyboards. <gasps> going to have keyboards and we're going to go to... Let's use a far Fisa for this for the minute because that's quite reedy and how how we like it. Might not work. Going to put the reverb on there straight away. Okay. Um, might have to turn that down as well because that's quite aggressive sounding. Um, but that's about right. So we want... Um, that's an A note there, because this one's the D. So there's A, C, E, so that's an A minor chord. And then we've got C, 
uh, C, E, G, so that's a C chord. Let's just program those straight in. They're one bar long. So I'm going to double click there and there's our four bar loop. I'm going to double click on it again and bring this up. I want to see it one bar at a time. So let's, uh, we can move this around an octave later. Um, so going to draw this in. I could really cheat here and just put this on 1-1, one, one, in which case if I do that it draws it in straight away. A, C, E. Um, so I've just changed the quantize to 1-1. One, one. So these are all, you can see this, there's bar 1 marker, bar 2 markers. It's all a whole bar long. This makes it much, much quicker to draw in. There's my C, and I don't have to be quite as accurate. I can make that a bit bigger so I can see it a bit better. C, and then let's just nip across, and the next bar, bar three, is um, that's B, D, and a G. So that's a, a, a first inversion, um, first inversion G chord. And then the last one is um, A, C, and F, which means that's a. Um, first inversion F chord. Right, now let's play that. That's quite good. Turn it down a bit. It's got this kind of slightly spacey wobble to it. We can increase that by using a bit of phaser maybe. Or even flanger. Ooh. Perhaps some delay as well. Sounds nice. Anyway, the kind of instrument sounds that you like. Okay, so that will work fine. I might just EQ out the very bottom end of it with these effects, because these effects are kind of fun. So it's a bit thinner. There we go. Right, that's fine. You've had enough of that one. Um, we're really shifting on with this. Let's move on. Um, so the next instrument sound is slightly more difficult. This is the bass. Okay, this is a four bar loop played on a smooth bass sound. Okay, so we'll find a bass sound in a minute. The bass sounds in Studio One aren't labelled particularly well, but we'll have a go. Um, and we're going to need to keep that in mind. So, um, let's go for a bass sound. Da, 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 da. Um, let's just go for Fat Fingers at the moment, which is quite a nice it's quite a nice smooth bass sound so um, it might have to be electronic uh, later but let's let's just go for that one I'm going to double click on there to get us a part um, you can play these in if you want by the way you can draw these in we've got lots of evidence of different ways in which you've in which we're, in which you've put uh, uh, sounds into this you should be probably playing in an improvisation later so it'll give you a chance to actually play something in from the on-screen QWERTY keyboard so Dum, da, dum. So A, 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 C, 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 G, 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 F, F, F. Okay, that's quite easy. It's the root notes of the chords. So let's nip in here. Going to just make that slightly bigger for myself. This is still on 1-1, one, one, so <laughs> it wants to, be, wants to be back on eighths. There's my first bar, bar 1 to bar 2. Um, so I need to watch out for this a little bit. Let's have another look here. So there's my whole bar. That's a quarter note and two eighth notes. So I've done it wrong straight away. So just going to get rid of those. I'm going to draw this in and just immediately lengthen that out. And there's my quarter notes. Uh, quarter note, eighth notes. Mm, that sounds not particularly in tune, but we'll, we'll perhaps go and change that bass sound in a minute. Um, and then C's. So I can click it and then pull it to the right and it draws it longer. And then I want an F. There's bar 3, so it's F. Oh, no, G. Definitely want to replace that sound. Don't like it. Right. better. That's probably the best. Mm. 
that uh, F, yeah, that uh, um, whatever that last one was that I saw, Fat Fingers, horrible, it's out of tune. <laughs> I don't understand why they put a patch in there that's out of tune, never mind. Um, but that sounds great, that's fine. Um, or I suppose it could be the far fees that's out of tune, but let's not get into that right now. Um, okay, so next next up is jazz guitar. Okay, um, one interesting thing about this is that's exactly the same rhythm as the previous one. I can show you many ways of doing this, but actually I'm going to show you just editing to get this. Um, so it's the same rhythm, and we're just going to use some editing. So I'm going to grab a jazz guitar sound. Now, again, you can change these later. So there's a jazz guitar sound. You can change these to be nearer. There's a lead part in this. So we're going to put a big old reverb on there. Um, I'm actually just going to grab that bass line. I'm going to press the Alt key on the keyboard, and I'm going to pull it down. And I've now got that bass line again. I'm going to double... Um, let's just right-click on that, and I'm going to call it lead. Okay. Let's give it a funky color. Right. Okay. Um, so... What I've got now is I've got my bass line played on the jazz guitar. What point's that? Okay, so I've got that played on the bass guitar now. Does that do us any good? Yes, it does. If I, if I zoom out of that and I grab all my notes and then I start pulling these notes up. Let's have a quick look. Um, so I'm just going to move them up by a few octaves. So That's pretty good. Does it want to go as far as that? No, it definitely doesn't want to be as high as that. There you go, just up one octave. And now I'm going to actually move the notes to the correct note. Um, it's just playing the bass line still up an octave, but I want to go C, C, D. So C, C. There you go, and we start to make this this uh, familiar melody. Here we go, I'm just going to play you the melody from here. There you go, that's the melody in there. Dun, 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 dun. So the next bit is the next bar wants to be E, E, F. Okay, so let's move those up. I'm just going to zoom in again just there so that we get this again here's the zoom down there so you can you can what they call the data zoom which makes life very easy e f make sure i keep them in the right rhythm you can just program them i just find this a bit quicker and then the next one is uh b b a It's actually a bit too zoomed in. It looks ridiculous. So there we go. Um, the reason I zoom in, the next one's A, A, G. The reason I zoom in is to actually just make them a little bit more physically man manageable. There it is. It's done. If you turn this, um, if you turn this on here, it will mean that it follows it along. The cursor, the window. Right, that's done. Okay, so we're more or less there with this, and then we can do some arranging. Um, I'm probably not going to go through all the arranging. I'll do just a little bit of it. So, um, bass lead. This is a four-bar loop with a more aggressive bass sound. Uh, all the notes are placed within the two and four beats of the bar. As you can see, nothing's on the first or the third beats of the bar. Um, so we need a sort of a more biting bass sound for this. So let's nip in and... Um, uh, let's get ourselves this DX bass because that might well do it. We'll start with that. We'll start with that and see where we get to. Okay. Um, it doesn't want to be quite that bassy, but we'll start with that. All right. So you're going to double click on that. Um, and again, I'm going to make this bigger. You can see two bars there. I've got my quantized to one eighth, which makes life kind of nice and easy for me. 
I might make that a little bit bigger. So it's uh, A, um, A, A, A. Um, and bear in mind again, I'm just going to go to that pencil tool. Much, much easier to do. A, 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 um, G. These are both quarter notes. G, A. G, A. Move along again. Um, G, G, G. So it's not there, it's in the second beat of the bar. You see there's first beat of the bar, 3-2 is the second beat of the bar. Um, did I do that wrong? Yep, straight away. Take that back again. If I get anything wrong, clicking on it again with a pencil tool turns it into an eraser. Um, G, G, G. And then the last note in here is uh, F, F, and then G again. And those will be there. Oh, I've got those wrong. Okay, so let's try that. I think possibly that's an octave too low. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on this out here and I'll say event. Uh, musical function, sorry, and I'm going to go up to transpose and I'm going to say plus one octave and say okay, so let's try that. Going to turn the tambourine up a bit. Drums are a bit loud. So things to do after this is, um, one, let's make this as the score for motorway. So so um, I think we're just going to copy that through by... Um, so uh, the first eight bars have just got to be exactly as is. Um, you should program everything as it is on the score first. Then compose two more instrumental lines in keeping with the style and arrange this piece over 32 bars with an intro and ending section. Well, at least an ending section. I just want you to keep the first eight bars exactly as is. Just comes in literally as that. We'll also be recording audio samples, so we'll be doing some of that a bit later. So, um, essentially, this wants to be 32 bars when you're finished with it. So, uh, I'm just going to copy that across there. That's my 32 bars. And I can decide after this point, um, I can decide after that point to do what I like. Okay, so we can do, we can do what we like from this point. So to copy it across, I was pressing the D key. That's a really good way. I, I, um, you might have seen that I'm just going to do that one more time just for everybody. I put a lasso around all of it. And I just press the D key and it copies it all across. That will only work if all of your parts... That will only work if all of your parts um, end at the right position. That's interesting. Um, I've done one too few. There you go. Um, if, for instance, let's just say we've got this, let's copy this across here just for an experiment, and let's say that our part is very slightly too long. What happens then when you copy it with a D key is it leaves a gap. So watch out for that. Um, and yeah, that should be about that with us. You'll need to extend that out to the end of that. Depends on where you're working. If you're just wanting to loop a section so that you can come up with something, that's a good idea. Let me just take you through this thing again where we perhaps, let's use a synth. Let's use something like JP6 Brass because that's interesting. Now it's not making any sound at the moment because the cutoff's down too low, which is odd, but there you go. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a delay on there because we'd like delays. I'm going to put a reverb on there because it's a That's nice. Um, so we're going to have ourselves a little fanfare sound. I'm going to put the key, uh, the uh, key amount for uh, cutoff up as well. The higher you get, the higher the cutoff goes. It keeps up with the keyboard. Um, I might even put a bit of resonance on there. That's quite nice. 
Right, so um, now, if you've got it set up in the background and you want to go and watch the 1917 video number two, I think, to make sure you've got it set up, you can just press your, press your tab, uh, sorry, your caps lock key, and it should bring up the on-screen keyboard. Um, and what I would generally do is I would generally play it in a loop. Now a lot of my a lot of my sounds are a bit too loud, and so I can't really hear what I'm putting in. So I'm going to just select all of those, select those with the shift key pressed. In fact, you can select the bottom one, press shift to press the top one. They all select. I'm just going to take the volumes down on those, and then when I press brass. Let's turn that up a bit more. Something like that. That's quite nice. Um, so I'm just going to put that line in. So to do that, I'm going to give myself probably a click. I'm also going to give myself a count in, which is this little round one. And then I'm just going to let it go. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, that's nasty. And I missed it, because normally on my other one I have two bar count in. And let's miss it again. Let's try it one more time. Just undo that, Control-Z. So I need to edit that. I probably need to quantize it anyway. Double click on that part. Just going to get rid of that for a second. I probably need to quantize that. So I'd press Q and yeah, that's eighth notes. Um, and at this point, I'm going to get rid of this browser at the end so that I can press apply. Uh, so that's quantized it to eighths. Um, so I still want to keep some of the humanity in there. I don't like that original start I just literally messed it up so let's let's um, delete that one let's have it come straight in that's quite nice and then if being me obviously I don't want it in the first bar anyway um, but being me, I would watch out what your time, what your snap is set to out here. Actually, what's interesting is my snap isn't set out here, so that's a shame. I'm gonna have to now bang that against the start. I'm not quite sure when I turn snap off, but snap up here is not set. There's snap there, which means things get very, very difficult. So I'm gonna put snap on. Now it's snapping. So snapping two bars. Um, that was almost quite dangerous because I didn't see that. Um, I'm gonna put this every other time round so that it just you know doesn't take over and we're going to turn looping off let's go have a look at the mixing desk there's our there's our brass line you see them they're written through their same presence at the moment there's our lead the lead bass there's our bass oh no that's not that's the um that's the that's the lead guitar there's the bass the organ there's the drums so a few little bits I might go back in and I might start listening and replacing sounds I don't really like that strat um Clean guitar's not bad. Electric guitar mute's lovely. That's exactly perfect. Let's put some reverb on that.
And as for the instructions, you're going to want to put you're going to want to put some kind of um, ending into this. You might want to just leave it so that uh, so for instance, um, you might want to leave it so that you don't have quite as much going on in the last bit, so that it, it takes itself down. Maybe you don't want drums in the last bar, so that you've got something. Um, you could even put a fill in. That might be very nice. Do do de 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 da da. Okay, so um, you you decide what you want for an outro uh, and how you want to do this. So you've got um, your eight bars to play with. Um, you might make it uh, after initially coming in with all of this all of these parts you might take it down in the center and then and then swell it back up towards the end that might might work really really well um however you know your two improvisation parts they might work really well don't don't feel you've got to stick at two improvisation parts you can do more if you like but just make two of them really good make the whole thing work together okay um when you finish this you'll want to select the top perhaps not tight to that last note but you might want to just give it a bar at the end um, so that uh, when you go up to song and export mix down it says between loop which is that uh, and you'll want an mp3 file and you'll want definitely to select something like 256 on the mp3 file um, yeah constant bitrate 256 and you'll want to call it surname First name, uh, motorway, and uh, publishing. Don't worry, don't worry about that. So that's absolutely fine. This is where it's going to go. It's going to go into your into your studio one. It's going to go into your studio one folder. Uh, you can change that here, so you can find out where you want to put it. Um, so that should be. Uh, we don't need the tempo written to audio files. Uh, so let's just go for that. We didn't do any um, compression or anything. It might be a really good idea to put some overall compression on this for when you're finishing it. But literally, that just gives us our... That's quite a rough MP3 of this one, but that's that shows you the mix-out process. Okay, right. There you go. Thank you very much. Cheers for your time today. Just to let you know, this piece is not as finished as your pieces should be. Your pieces should have more arrangement more uh, addition of effects and another improvised part in there as well. Okay. <laughs>